This Ridleyo is sponsored by InfinitCoin.com. So, Operation American Spring apparently joins the Tea Party, Occupy Wall Street, the Ron Paul movement, the Free State Project, all these other post-9-11 dissent movements. How will it stack up against them? How good or bad is it looking? Well, let's start with the good. The first thing I did when I heard about the existence of the movement and the likelihood that it would actually put out a, a reasonable size protest, the first thing I did was to look up what the opposition is saying about it, what the pro-government people have to say. Basically, OAS aims to get a bunch of people to demonstrate in Washington, D.C. and stay there. A little bit similar to the bonus expeditionary force back in the late 20s. Sorry, early 30s. A quick search of right-wing, is rightwingwatch.org or rightwingwatch.com uh, gave me a sense that there wasn't really currently that much to be worried about. I mean, by worried about, I'm not seeing that much that I don't like about OAS from a libertarian perspective. The worst thing I could see uh, that, uh, that, that Right Wing Watch was saying about them was that they, that they sort of constitute an attempted coup. And the fact is that OAS does seem to be sort of military toward its core. I guess it's led by a, a retired colonel. Apparently, I've heard there's a general, or a retired general, I guess, involved. I'm really glad to see veterans actually now, or military people, uh, doing something that's actually increasing freedom a little bit, as opposed to just sucking on the taxpayer tit and shooting brown people. You know, there's that Facebook meme that's always going around that says, you know, if, if the military were actually defending our freedom, this is what it would look like. And it, you know, it shows them attacking the White House. Well, I don't want them attacking the White House physically, and I don't think that's what they're planning to do, but this is at least a little closer to what that Facebook meme would look like. At OperationAmericanSpring.org, it says, it gives you a, a, a quick summary of the goal. Mission, quote, restoration of constitutional government, rule of law, freedom, liberty of the people, by the people, for the people, from despotic and tyrannical federal leadership. Unquote. It's a little vague, but there's really not a ton there to get angry about, again, from my anti-aggressionist perspective. There's a long history of watching what happens when you have a Tea Party type movement uh, that's you know, a little bit constitutional, it's a little bit small government. The, the results of having the Tea Party in action have been pretty positive despite it being co-opted, despite it not being libertarian, par se. So far, I may be missing something, but so far, looks pretty good. Now, though, let's talk about the bad. This apparently official website makes some statements and some strategic representations that I, I don't like. First, it says, quote, Government is not the target, it is sound. Corrupt and criminal leadership must be replaced. Unquote. Well, that's just inaccurate. Our problems in the U.S. are closer to being systemic than they are to being human error or human wickedness. Humans are not all that bad. The federal system is designed to raise the very worst of them, though, up the top. It seems to have pretty much been doing that for about 230 years, with a few bright exceptions. I don't think a Swiss-style system with a weak president ever would have been able to produce a Lincoln and the slaughter of 500,000 Americans by their own, or an invasion of Mexico, or a, a brutal occupation of the Philippines, plus all the even worse things that have followed. The other problem I see is strategic or PR-related. They, uh, they have talked themselves up too much. Quote, Concept of operations. Phase one, field millions, as many as 10 million patriots who will assemble in a peaceful, nonviolent, physically unarmed display of unswerving loyalty to the U.S. Constitution. Unquote. Now, since the they seem to be talking about a focus on the physical location of Washington, D.C., 
I'm assuming they're saying they're going to try to get millions of people to show up in one location. And it's, I mean, the date is uh, May 16th. I, I don't think there's any way they're going to have anything like that kind of number by May 16th. And that's going to be the day that the press comes and goes if, if, if they're not careful. You know, the, 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 the most prominent site I could find on Facebook has only about 24,000 likes. And again, the problem is not have, I mean, 24,000 likes is awesome, but the problem is that people are so often overstating their goals or their expectations. I mean, only by using the term millions could you make 24,000 likes look weak. It would have been so much better if they followed... JJ Luna's advice for opening a business start small so if they had set just a, a much smaller goal for their initial uh, phase uh, then they could move on uh, after accomplishing that to their bigger goal but this is just the way they put this is going to give the media so much ammunition they promised there would be millions but there were only thousands one positive thing I'm seeing though is that on if you look at their apparently official Facebook page, the one that has the most likes, best I can tell, it, uh, it is awash in trolls, and that, I think, is very positive. It means that they are not, uh, they're not yet controlling the speech very much on that Facebook page, and it means they've struck a nerve. So one, one of the key mistakes that movements make after they start to catch fire is that they they freak out because somebody doesn't like them. And then they start trying to uh, control comments on their Facebook page or their web forum back in the day. I saw this basically destroy the very promising Christian exodus movement out in South Carolina. I mean, they were on fire twice as effective as the Free State Project during their first six months, you know, compared to the Free State Project's first six months. Uh, but then they realized some people didn't like them, and they couldn't they couldn't handle the fact that those people were posting messages on their on their web forum. So they horsed it down, uh, you know, and made it a bureaucratic process to communicate. And they were basically done, you know, six months later. Hardly any evangelical Christians ended up moving to South Carolina and banding together to protect each other's rights. Hopefully OAS won't make the same mistake. Well, you, I guess actually, you know, you kind of saw some of the same mistakes with Occupy Wall Street, not necessarily on the Internet so much, but there was an attempt in New Hampshire by uh, OWS folks to cull uh, libertarians out of the movement. And uh, that, that, that did help the libertarians. It got them some free publicity, but it didn't help Occupy New Hampshire any. A uh, problem that I'm seeing is that I guess Erica Chenoweth, uh, the gal who's probably done the most extensive study of uh, civil resistance, Chenoweth says that uh, one of the biggest mistakes, or at least one of the well, one of the prominent mistakes that she mentioned that, that, that movements make is that they they do too much in just one geographical area. It was, and I don't think she well, she didn't mean it so much in terms of a geographical area, but more like one. One, one city square, for instance, uh, Tiananmen, was uh, very, very uh, concentrated, because you call it the Chinese Spring of the late 80s, and because the movement was so focused around Tiananmen Square, uh, it made a concentrated target, and was uh, the, the authorities were able basically to just go in and take its heart out in one swoop, in one spot. This worked fairly well for the Fed's during the bonus expeditionary crisis, uh, I guess in around 1931, this is where you had thousands, I guess, maybe millions of, uh, probably just thousands though, of um, World War I vets who had erected encampments uh, near the White House. Uh, Generals MacArthur and Eisenhower, or I don't know if he's, I don't know if Eisenhower was a general at the time, but MacArthur and Eisenhower went in and uh, basically killed 16 people in the process of cleaning that out. However, uh, no liberty was really attained as a result of the uh, the army, the bonus expeditionary forces uh, sacrifice. Just made it easier for Roosevelt to get elected and do worse things probably than Hoover was doing. 
At the same time, you had Occupy Wall Street, which was very good about decentralizing itself in many ways. But it may have gone too far in the other direction in the sense that it was so dis disparate and so spread out that despite the huge numbers, they just sort of petered out. That's why, as always, I like the Free State Project model, which provides that balance. There's no need to encamp. There's no need to focus on one city square. We live here, so it's very hard to blast us out or make us go away. We're concentrated strategically uh, across a state, New Hampshire, but we're not concentrated tactically so that you could, you know, you can't just set up one command post for arresting all the free staters, right? We are sufficiently dispersed that it would take about three hydrogen bombs to kill half of us, half of the free staters that are in New Hampshire on a, on a normal day. Anyway, uh, like I said, you know, unless I'm missing something, I appreciate these folks going out there, getting involved. Pretty much all protest is good protest. If it's directed against the federal government, I'll be watching and maybe taking constructive action as needed. Infinite Coin, the cryptocurrency that aims to provide cheap peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure in developing countries. Their motto, real money for real people. IFC is traded on Beater.com. That means it's easily converted into Bitcoin. I accepted Infinite Coin for this ad. That means you can too. InfiniteCoin.com